Hi everyone, it's Arthur here at Arthur Ease Your Mind on YouTube and ArthurEaseYourMind.com. I am an intuitive consultant and psychic advisor. And as always, thank you, thank you, thank you, really from the bottom of my heart for all the likes, the shares, the comments, and all the wonderful things you do to help support my channel. I really do appreciate it. It means the world to me. It might sound trite, but seriously, it does. I love you all. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And starting next year, I will be starting memberships. So how that's going to happen yet, I'm not sure. But stay tuned. In the meantime, it's Christmas Day, December 25th, 2023. Merry Christmas to everyone. I hope you had a wonderful day. And... I would wish you all the love, peace, and joy that the world has to offer you, each and every one of you. In the meantime, we know that not all parts of this world are experiencing love, peace, and joy, and happiness. So do me a favor, tonight, before you go to bed, or after you're watching this video, wherever you are in the world, close your eyes and send out love, and bright light, pink light, purple light, whatever it is, and send out the love in your heart to every nook and cranny of this world, okay? And if everybody could do that, it can help that just raise the vibration a little bit. I know it sounds airy-fairy, but it does work, all right? So again, yes, it's Christmas. I was going to do a show for Christmas Eve, but then I got a client that called and, well, it was an emergency. And we were on the phone for almost two hours last night. So that's what happened. So today, every time I went to start this video, the phone rang. And it was two clients. So, and some family members, thank God. But anyway, here I am now. So let's get on with this. First of all, stop freaking out. The one thing you have to do for the coming year, between now, New Year's, and then after New Year's, there's one thing you have to do. That's all. Breathe. B-R-E-A-T-H-E, -E, with a capital E at the end. Breathe. There's so much crap out there on the news that it's driving everybody batty. Don't let it happen. Everyone's running around like Chicken Little. And all the psychics in this community are like, it's only an acorn to so stop. Do yourself a favor. Stop. It's kind of like my piano teacher from eons ago once told me, because I was like very anxious about a lot of things in my time in my life and just going crazy. And he said, okay, he sat me down and said, listen to this. There's a guy that goes into the doctor's office and he's hitting himself in the head with a hammer. The doctor looks at him horrified and says, why do you do that? And the guy says, well, it feels so good when I stop. So stop. All right. Now, I did a wonderful show last Monday on the 18th with Andre. And the question that came up was about Navali. At the time, I had predicted that he would be found within a three-week period. Well, he came up today. Apparently, he's in a Arctic penal colony, I guess, Siberia. But he's alive. I felt that he was on a hunger strike. They didn't like that. They didn't want him being a martyr. So they took him. I believe they put IVs in him and then shipped him to Siberia, but he's been found. He's alive. I'd say he's well, but considering the circumstances, he's the best he can be. All right. Now, I got a lot of questions this week about the Supreme Court. Like from Angelic Alchemy. Merry Christmas, Arthur. Merry Christmas. Can you please let us know how the Supreme Court's refusal to fast-track Jack Smith's request 
will impact his upcoming DC trial. Thank you. Wishing you and every one a very Merry Christmas. Thanks. Okay. As many of you know, Jack Smith leapfrogged the appellate court and went directly to the Supreme Court. They said they were not going to look at it at this time. Now, people are saying, oh, my God, it's a win for Trump, win for Trump. No, it's not a win for Trump. I feel because of the severity of it, they didn't want to take it. They wanted to go through the proper channels. So that if they were to rule one way, then somebody could say, well, if it had been through the other appellate court, whatever. Okay. We're talking about the Supreme Court. The crazies. Well, six of them at least. That being said, when Jack Smith filed with the Supreme Court to hear the case regarding Donald Trump's blanket immunity, which he says he has. He also filed with the D.C. court at the same time. So basically, he hedged his bet. Now, there is going to be a hearing on January 8th with the appellate court at the appeal. And I believe they're not going to take their time with this. The hearing's on January 8th. And I'm saying by the 17th, they'll have an answer. And I feel they will say that Donald Trump is not immune. He doesn't have blanket immunity, presidential immunity, or whatever he wants to call it. He doesn't have it. So Trump and his gaggle of lawyers will then go to the Supreme Court to appeal. Now, the Supreme Court can take their time. I don't feel that's going to happen. If they want to move fast, they can move fast. I mean, when George Bush versus Gore, when they decided who was going to be the president, they made that decision in 72 hours. So my feeling is I keep on getting February 6th. Why I say that? That's my dad's birthday. My dad came to me the other night. He doesn't say much. He just looks at me and waves sort of and then disappears so that's kind of what happened so because i was pondering about this whole thing and he shows up and i'm thinking okay february 6th kind of like that whole thing with my grandmother with the with the um slowing down of not a ceasefire but close to it before in november so anyway so i'm going to say by february 6th the supreme court is going to make a decision I feel they are going to say that Trump does not have presidential immunity like he thinks he does, because what he was doing had nothing to do with being presidential. It was more campaign and a little thing called insurrection. They may not say that. That's what I feel about why they will. So what does that mean for the March date for Judge Chutkin in D.C.? Nothing. I do not see her putting things on hold in infinitum. I mean, things are just stay right now, yes. But once the, they, the appeal goes through and then they go to the Supreme Court, I feel like she, the stay is going to be lifted. She can still move ahead doing what she's doing, preparing for the jury questionnaires, all the other good stuff she has to do. And I still feel there's going to be a March date. It may be towards the end of March, but I'm not seeing anything being delayed after March. Now, in a worst case scenario, even if it were like two months, which I don't see, like to May, the trial was then happen still before the election. And that's what Jack Smith wants. So it's still moving forward, people. And he's in for some surprises. Donald Trump, that is. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but the man's gone off the rails. He's quoting Hitler. He's going crazy. He's been telling everybody that... Actually, he reprinted an article from an Iowa newspaper that stated that his people like when he quotes Hitler, basically. So he knows what he's doing. He knows he's quoting Hitler. And he says that base wants that. 
Well, maybe his base wants it, but what about the rest of the people in the United States? Isn't he supposed to represent all of us? Yeah. So, he's in for some surprises. Also, I was asked here from LH. Hi, Arthur. Happy holidays to you and your channel community. Thank you. Will the Supreme Court uphold the Colorado court's decision to keep 45 off their ballot? This is a tricky one because I really feel the Supreme Court does not want to get involved with this. For some reason, I kept on seeing them handing it over to Congress to figure out what I don't see them wanting to make a ruling. So I feel they may bypass this and say, oh, well, we can't say he's not an insurrectionist because it, there wasn't any, he's not convicted. Whatever. They're going to skirt it. Even if he is on the ticket, the man's still not going to win. As I've predicted ad nauseum, he's not going to be around across the finish line. And as I've been saying lately, I keep on picking up Nikki Haley will be the nominee, even though his base hates her. She's a woman. But she's so mad, it's not even funny. And that Biden is still going to cross the finish line as our next president. Okay? So, I mean, the jury's not out on this decision with the Colorado court decision. So we'll see what happens because other states have this pending as well. But for some reason, I'm not getting a full answer on it. So when that happens to me, it means I'm not supposed to know or you're not supposed to know. But when we do, I still feel it's, it doesn't matter because Trump is not our next president. Again, he's been going off the rails. Now, Fiber Art asks, Hi, Arthur. Merry Christmas. What will Trump do when he does not win? You really want to know? He's going to crap himself. Yeah, he's going to fill his diaper. Now, you may laugh at this, but I'm serious. Now, I saw this headline. I wish... I had written it. I cannot give myself credit for it. I did not write this. But instead of order in the court, it was odor in the court. Apparently, it's been being reported that the leader of the cult, Cult 45, is basically smelling. And there's an odor coming from him as of late. So, I think the man needs his diaper changed. So, wouldn't it be nice if Saturday Night Live could get Lisa Kudrow to reprise her role as Phoebe from Friends and sing, instead of Smelly Cat, Smelly Cat, what are they feeding you? It would be Smelly Trump. Okay, entertainment purposes only, sorry. It would be fun, though. Also, it's been reported that while Trump's been doing his little viral vitrals on social, so, what is it, Truth Social, when he does his little like screaming act, quoting Hitler, Mussolini, and everybody else, that the man is in the front of his toe, is his toes are standing on sandbags so that he doesn't tip over. Well, weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. But in this case, they're saying that somebody said, well, maybe it's because he has heels on and he's leaning forward all the time. Possibly. There's another thing. There's a type of dementia that when people get this, they start leaning forward. Their arms go slump. And I'm just going to put that out there. Okay. Okay. He's standing, his toes are on sandbags, people, so he doesn't tip over. Make of it what you want. I'm just stating the facts, but as a psychic, yeah, 
I feel this brain is Swiss cheese. Just saying. Entertainment purposes only again. Now, Zelina Donna asks, after Trump is gone and no longer physically here, will the GOP stop being Trump-like? Or will someone replace Trump and that negative energy continues? Well, once there's a cockroach, there's always going to be cockroaches. It's just we need to exterminate the house. I feel there will still be little pockets of people here and there. I mean, the diehard base, if Trump were to croak, they're going to be saying, oh, it's a conspiracy. They murdered him. So it's not going to stop right away. But in about four years, yes. It'll still be a whisper. It's still there. It's just like there are people that still have their uncles, their great uncles and grandfathers, Nazi uniforms in the basement. I'm not saying the Nazis are, or anything like that. I'm just saying they still have the uniforms. So I'm sure people will be having their little red hats encased in whatever. Class. Oh, here's a fun one. What will Alina Hobbes' future career be after Trump's loss in New York fraud case? Well, if she doesn't get disbarred, she'll probably still practice law, like for jaywalkers, drunk drivers, wife beaters, stuff like that. But I like that Michael Cohen calls her the next Mrs. Trump. So we shall see. Now, I got a couple questions about the binder, you know, that mysterious binder that went disappearing during the last weeks of the Trump administration. The one about all the secrets with the Soviet Union or Russia, whatever. Yeah. Untamed spirit. Who has the 10 inch spy binder on Russia that McCarthy took from the White House? McCarthy or 45? Will the FBI find it? And also, bad kitty. Who has the binder? What do you see happening to the binder? I mean, this is sounding like a Nancy Drew mystery, doesn't it? The mystery of the missing binder. Well, anyway, when I focus on this, there's only one word that I'm hearing from the guides, at least mine. And that is, it will be uncovered. They didn't say it will surface. They said it will be uncovered. And I did see a glimpse of another, I'm not going to say the word raid, but another visit to Merlago and Bedminster. I don't know the timing on this, but I do see it ending up in Jack Smith's hands. Right in time for the Florida hearings and all that good stuff with our wonderful Judge Cannon. Now, I've been predicting that the end of February into March, she's gone. So I'm just going to put that out there. Food for thought. The binder does show up. Who has it at this moment? I'm not sure. But it does become uncovered. Quote, unquote. Now, Diane asks, Dear Arthur, Republicans are threatened to remove Biden from the ballot in red states. Will they succeed? I believe Texas is the first to act on this. It would be Texas, wouldn't it? Don't worry. What are they going to put him, threatened to take him off? What does he do? What has he done? Is he an insurrectionist? Can he use the 14th Amendment, clause, the third clause, against him? I don't think so. It's just talking points. It's something for MGT, my tragic girlfriend, to basically raise money off of. You know, with all her crazy magas. So, don't worry. I mean, for Christ's sake, they're trying to impeach the man with no proof or n for no cause. So, yeah, they would try to get him off the ballot. Not going to work. So don't worry about it. Okay? This is where I said breathe. Now, Maggie Brooks asks, 
New York Times reports today that the Kremlin is open to a ceasefire if Russia can declare some kind of victory. Theater. Theater of the absurd. How can they say there's a victory? There isn't. Okay? I am still predicting that within 18 months, Ukraine is part of NATO. So working backwards, they win the war. Working backwards, I have said that Putin's not going to be around after April 1st. I know I'm going out on a limb with that, but that's what I get. And that's what I'm saying, and I'm sticking to it. And when April 1st comes around, and if he's still there, whoops. Anyway, but will he be there physically, mentally, or spiritually? Stephanie asks, hi, Arthur, I saw that it was reported Putin will meet with the prince of Saudi Arabia. The purpose of the meeting is to make certain gasoline prices spike as the 24 election approaches. The hope is that this would hurt Biden at the polls. Will this meeting take place? If yes, will this tactic do any damage to Biden? I don't know if it's going to take place. If it is, it may be a Zoom meeting, number one. I don't see Putin being in the best shape to travel. Number two, I don't know Biden. He's still winning. I don't care what you throw at this. Biden still wins. So that's how I'm going to answer that. All right, it's not going to work. Mary Cox asks, did Netanyahu intentionally ignore the intelligence reports he got about the potential for Hamas raids in order to generate what he hoped would be political support. She also asked how many hostages are still alive. I cannot answer how many hostages are alive. I'm sorry. I just don't get an answer on it. There's some still alive. What their condition is. Remember I talked about sending some love and light, purple light, and all the good stuff out there to every nook and cranny? They need it. Please do it. And as far as did he Netanyahu intentionally do this, there's something that says doesn't seem kosher, for lack of better words. At the same time, do you remember George Bush was accused of chatter being ignored before 9-11? So I'm just saying, did the man do this on purpose? I don't feel it was completely on purpose, but time will tell. History will tell on this. All right. Now, there was some good news out of Wisconsin. Yay. About the seats. It, the, the map was so gerrymandered. They were told they have to re redo them. It's going to help Democrats. At the same time, Wisconsin Supreme Court, they vote for them. Okay. And a liberal judge, Janet, I forget her last name, was elected. Now, she had said everything was gerrymandered and the electoral maps were just rigged to favor Republicans. So before she even made a ruling, they tried to impeach her. But then it didn't happen. Now, again in Wisconsin, Election Commission, just according to a light house seeker, Wisconsin's Election Commission just rejected the complaint against the Trump fake electors for the second time. Will the fake electors ever be criminally charged? Yes. I don't know what the statute of limitations are on this, but before they run out, they're going to get charged. Will they go to jail? That I'm not sure. Will they give over evidence? That I am sure to stay out of jail. So don't worry. It takes time. But it happens. Okay? Oh, and I'm sorry if you noticed above my lip. I forgot to change my razor this morning. <laughs> so I kind of like rip my face apart. So that's what that's about. Sorry. Uh, Anne asks, hi, Arthur. Thanks for coming out on Christmas Eve. Yeah, the show was supposed to be Christmas. I'm sorry. Eve. 
Alex Jones offered $55 million to Sandy Hook parents after he was ordered to pay them over a billion or more. Will he finally be forced to sell his assets to pay the parents what he owes them? He'll be forced, okay? It's like Rudy Giuliani filing bankruptcy after the verdict of 140 six million dollars against him so even if alex jones goes bankrupt he still has to pay if you go back you can't discharge something that you lost in court that you have to pay okay in the long run the man will be paying for the rest of his life in one way or another okay He's not making a comeback, people. Not making a comeback. Um, Amy Warren. Hi, Arthur. Can you please read on Ted Cruz for the election in 2024? And Colin Already, who is running against him? Well, I don't know who's running against him. I don't see Ted Cruz winning. Now, let me correct myself. If he does win, it's with dark money, with tricks, and some not so legal moves if Ted Cruz wins. That being said, that will be found out. So even if he were to win, he doesn't win. He gets booted out. And I also believe he may be one of the unnamed co conspirators. So time will tell on that one. The guy of Texas. User ZP8HW, whatever. The Seattle Children's Hospital just filed a lawsuit against the Texas AG for requesting demanding patients' records. How will this work out? Now, what this is about is the wonderful Texas AG. We all know who that is. He went after the Seattle Children's Hospital demanding patient records of children that were whose parents took them to Seattle in regards to possibly getting health care because they're transgendered. Now, I feel they're going to lose, Texas is going to lose the lawsuit. To go to a hospital in another state, demand to see patients' information. Again, this is almost like what the woman went through with her fetus being unviable and going for an abortion, had to leave the state. There's no law in the constitutions of any state anywhere that I know of that says you cannot travel to another state to get health care. And that's basically what they're doing. And then they're asking for records, medical records. Mm -mm. I do not see that going very far. Also, there's a wonderful question that Energy Balance 333 asks. And I really don't have an answer for this, but it's brilliant. And I wish somebody could send this off to J Jasmine Crockett or Maxwell Frost or others out there. Okay. It says, will any politicians be charged with practicing medicine without a license for overriding a doctor's diagnosis of health of life threatening pregnancies? Isn't that brilliant? Because that's basically what these guys are doing. They're practicing medicine without a license. But not only will this mean for just pregnancies. But how about all the suits at insurance companies that override the, what the doctors are diagnosed, doctors are asking for their clients or their patients rather? It's a very good question. I feel worded the right way. This could go somewhere. Thank you. That's all I can say on this. So, everybody, put it out there, okay? Call your congressman, congresswoman, senator, whomever. 
call, ask this question. Will politicians be charged with practicing medicine without a license for overriding a doctor's diagnosis of health-threatening pregnancies? Thank you. Now, this is off topic, but a fun topic. Crazy Shark 22. Hi, Arthur. What are your thoughts on feng shui? Real spiritual energy behind it or bogus? It's real. As far as I'm concerned. I mean, when I set up my office, I didn't what I didn't take out my little app on my iPhone with my feng shui compass to figure out the best way to put my office, where to put my desk, where to put it, the bookcase. Well, against the wall, actually. But you know what I'm saying. Feng shui, it's all about chi energy, making sure that it flows. And why do you think there's a big fish tank every time you go into a Chinese restaurant? Proper feng shui. Okay. So, yeah, I do believe in it. In fact, a number of years ago, I got sick of the apartment I was living in and I rearranged everything. I got very sick. I mean, this is the time when I had the collapsed lung and pneumonia and losing eyesight, all that crap for three months. So I did call a friend of mine who is a feng shui person here in Beverly Hills. Does a lot of celebrity homes. And I said, I need you to, I rearranged my furniture. And he said, I already did your apartment once. Why would you rearrange it? I said, yeah, but that was like five years ago. I was just tired of the layout. So I moved things around. And he stopped over, took out his little maps, took out his little compass and just looked at me and said, put everything back. That's why you're sick. And he was explaining the energy flow, how I, everything was blocked and how my baby grand piano was just like, really blocking everything in the health sector or whatever. So we moved it all back. I got better. So from personal experience, I'm going to say feng shui, there's something to being the feng shui. There's a lot of different practices, a lot of different ways of looking at it, a lot of different books, a lot of people asking about it. It's there. I'm sure you can find stuff out here on YouTube. Um, and there's lots of practitioners out there. I would do your homework, but it's there. Um, now, Lisa Ann asked that she read that currently many Democrats are retiring from the House. That Republicans at the end of this next term. And also... Um, Catalee can also ask, I read that thus far in the House, 23 Democrats and 12 Republicans will retire or leave in 2024. Will this make it harder for the House to go blue? I really would like to see all of Congress go blue. I will vote. Thanks. This is going blue, people. I don't know who's retiring the full amount. To me, it doesn't matter. Blue is blue. I always get the Senate. I always get the House going to the Democrats. Hakeem Jeffries being our Speaker of the House. And that's when a lot of things start shifting for the better. I mean, you do realize that Mike Johnson tried to get through something about Social Security to get it be taken away again, quietly. I mean, he's such a Christian, isn't he? Which mine is mine, which yours is mine? Come on. I didn't see that in the Bible. But also, speaking of Social Security, there's a question here from Abe Hill, 
Will the House of Representatives pass a bill that will help those on Social Security? And will it be a percentage or flat rate? By the way, I loved you on Astrology Alert Andre with Andre. Thanks. It was a great show. I had a lot of fun with him, and I hope to have him back if he wants. So what I'm saying here is I'm not 100% sure about this because I do know that last year there was a cost of living hike, one of the largest ones in, in a number of years. And in 2024, there's another cost of living hike again. So don't worry. They're not taking away Social Security. They're not taking away Medicare. It's not going to happen, people. Okay. Um, and Patsy Anchors asks, now that Tuberville, Tuberville has had to release the promotions of the military. Now, remember, I did predict by the end of the year, which it all happened. Uh, what about the holdouts of Rand Paul for on ambassadorships and J.D. Vance on DOJ appointments? Can the Democrats do anything to move those situations forward? Is this part of Project 2025? Will that be successful? Thank you. Happy holidays. I do not feel this is part of Project 2025. And it will not be successful, 2025, because the Republicans are not getting in. Now, if you want to go vote for Republicans and tell everybody about Republican, so that they can bring in Project 2025, where they give all the power of the three branches of government to the president and basically anoint him to be king, go for it. But as I've been predicting, not going to happen. I also feel that Ron Paul and is going the same thing that they did with Amy Klobuchar and the Senate, where they voted to override Tuberville. The same thing is going to happen with Ron Paul and J.D. Vance. All right? So I would say, as far as the ambassadorships, by the end of the first quarter of 2024, there's going to be mechanisms put in place to get that pushing forward again. All right. So that's about it. I wasn't going to mention this, but I'm going to anyway. Don't you love that segue? I got a comment. I try not to let comments bother me whatsoever. Everybody has their opinion. Some people live in the basement with their mothers and watch video games and then post comments. We call them trolls. I thought they lived under the bridge, but apparently they don't. Someone wrote and said they found that when I go off on my lectures about voting, you know, when I say vote, 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 they find it insulting. Saying that anyone that's going to watch my channel is going to vote anyway, so why waste their time is what they're trying to convey. Well, I find that common insulting. Reason being, yes, I hope and pray that everyone that watches my channel will vote, vote, vote for the right reasons and for the right people. But there are people that stumble upon the channel that are not subscribers that may listen to my little lecture and maybe if I could just change one person's mind to get them to vote, my job is done. So if you felt insulted, I'm not going to apologize. I'm just going to say fast forward. Because I'm still going to lecture and tell people to vote. All right? <sighs> that being said, yes, I feel like a blithering idiot right now, talking and talking and talking. But... I enjoy you guys so much. I mean, this community is so welcoming and so giving and so supportive. You have no idea. It's like sometimes, you know, you go to a rock concert and somebody dives into the, uh, into the crowd. They all hold them up. That's how you people make me feel. You hold me up. So that being said, Merry Christmas. Have a happy new year. 
I'll be around. And just as always, take care of yourself. Take care of others. Have fun. And above all, stay amazing. All right. So thanks for stopping by. Take care. Bye bye. It's almost Christmas when that's the talk of the town. But there ain't no snow on the ground at all. Cause Tennessee ain't known for its snowfalls. But all the children are praying when oh, this is their one wish that snow would fall on Christmas Eve and be their Christmas gift. It's almost Christmas Oh, and everyone's all in a rush And the secrets are said with a hush Till later when they're all wrapped up with brown paper And all the parents are praying When oh, this is their one wish That joy and peace would come this evening and be their Christmas gift. Oh, here we go.